Hi, it's Steve Rosado with eXp Realty. Today I'm going to be talking about renovations that sellers should be considering to ensure that they're maximizing the return on investment when preparing their home for sale. And in advance, yes, I know, updating the kitchen and the bathroom will absolutely increase the curb appeal. But I also understand not every seller has the budget or the timeline to perform these upgrades before they list their home for sale. So today I'm going to focus on the top three renovations that I would recommend for sellers to increase their bottom line and receive the maximum return on investment. Oh yeah, and as you probably noticed, there's a blizzard behind me. Another one. Thank you, 2021. Let's get into the video. All right, let's jump into the first and most important item. It's patch and painting. This one is a no brainer, but I also want to caution you. The painter that you choose and the materials that you choose are just as important as the work itself. You gotta make sure that you're working with a master painter that is also very skilled in patchwork to ensure a perfect finish. And in terms of the materials that you're gonna be using, go with the high quality paint. I would recommend Benjamin Moore, and at the very least, Bear Marquis. It gets great coverage, and it's gonna cover up a lot of those blemishes that cheaper paints just won't cover. So the thing with painting is, this is one of the items that a lot of folks feel as though they can DIY and you know, do it themselves, but I do caution you, there's a lot more work involved than just putting paint on the walls. It's not until you get into the work that you realize that a skilled professional is the only way to get these walls back to normal. So let's start with some of the items that are most obvious that you look past every day. You know those settlement cracks that have been getting worse over time? It's time to make those go away. And how about that ceiling that yes, you had a leak and it was fixed, but you just never replaced the drywall on the ceiling. It's time to fix that as well. But it's not as simple as just painting over these items. So let's start with the sediment cracks. It's gonna take multiple hands of compound and sanding, which is a very time consuming process. And you want that to be even. And once that's done, you're not just painting that area, you're painting the entire area, right? So that's now focused on that ceiling that you didn't replace the drywall. Once it's wet, it can't accept paint. I mean, it will for a short time period, but it's gonna to start to bubble and crack. So what you really need to do is replace that entire area of sheetrock and then the same process. It's gonna be compounding, sand, drywall, tape. Um, so this is how you get your walls to be flush and perfect. Okay, we've taken care of your paint. Let's focus on your floors. Refinishing your hardwood floors and replacing your carpets are big ticket items that have a massive return on investment. You know, when people walk into a home, first they'll look at the walls, then the look at the floors kind of tells the whole story of the home and how it was kept. So being able to refinish these and present them as something basically new is going to increase that immediate curb appeal and it looks fantastic in photos. So let's start with the refinishing option of the hardwood floors. What this allows you to do is sand them down and then seal them. At that point in time, you can change the color. So right now, People are leaning towards lighter colors. So you have the ability to update your floors in terms of people's perception. So I would say people are leaning towards lighter right now, like a white oak or something along those lines. And to stay in that color scheme, I would also recommend that you finish it with a satin water-based polyurethane that gives you that nice white oak feel and not too much glow, not too much gloss. It's just the right amount for it to look modern. Now let's focus on carpets. Carpets, this is an item in which I would just recommend replacing it rather than getting it cleaned. Uh, some of those stains are just never gonna come out. And it's one of those marketing items as well where you can tell people, brand new carpets. No matter how many times you clean those carpets, people are gonna get a little skeeved out that you never know what's in those carpets, you know? So let's talk about how much each one is going to cost. In terms of the refinishing option, you can expect about $3.25 to $3.75 uh, per square foot for the refinishing option, and that includes the new color stain. Without the stain, you maybe save about 25 to 50 cents, but I would say update the color. Now, when we talk about carpet replacement, it can be as little as $300, $400 per room, um, but you know, there's usually gonna be a minimum to what labor will charge. They may have like a $1,000 minimum, so you have to change a couple of rooms. But these are two items that you will absolutely get more value than what you're spending, and in many cases, double what you're spending, and on top of lowering the days on market in which your home is gonna be listed. All right, so the third and final major item, and this one's pretty simple, but a lot of people neglect to do this, is recalking and resealing your bathrooms and your kitchens where 
The caulk lines meet your vanities, your toilets, your bathtubs, and your backsplash. Now this is not a very expensive item. You're talking about a latex caulk or seal, but a lot of times people will go ahead and get a home painted. Um, they'll paint the bathroom or they'll paint the kitchen and they won't address caulking. And basically what this means is people will come in and they'll look, they'll see a nice fresh coat of paint and then they can see some dirty old caulk lines. And it just kind of throws the whole thing off. It's very inexpensive renovation to do. Actually, I would just say a very inexpensive upkeep. And it's one that you have to factor in. I mean, I think you can average about $150 per bathroom, um, maybe $200. But if you're gonna paint it, absolutely take advantage of that time period to recalk everything, have it all looking fresh and new and shiny. This is something that gives you a significant bang for your buck. One of the small items and details that you absolutely should be focusing on, just kind of have people's eyes scanning around the room. The floors look great, the walls look amazing, everything's finished properly with the caulk. This is how you receive maximum return on investment and get the highest amount of money in the shortest amount of time. All right, so I'm gonna give you three more small sub items that I would absolutely recommend that you address that they're not the big ticket major items. These are very inexpensive, but always look at these anyway. So lights, let's replace those old lights. You know, the ones that have been phased out and you know, they haven't made those since 1990. Time to replace that fixture and also Replace the bulbs that are out. I've walked into homes, I've sold homes where, you know, you turn on the lights and bulbs are out. That just doesn't look right. So it's one of those things where people start looking for other things. They're like, is that just the bulb or is that an actual electrical problem? Take that question mark out of their head. Also focus on windows. So, you know, when you have window sashes or, you know, you have window locks that are broken, uh, just get those fixed. Take that question mark out of somebody's head and also make sure that doesn't end up on an inspection report. Inspectors love to put small items like this on there. Take the light, light bulbs out, you know, take the light fixtures out, take the window locks out. Don't give them many things to nitpick. And then the final item is invest in a very good deep clean. Make sure that it's a highly reputable cleaning company that takes care of every inch of the house does the kitchen thoroughly, all of the appliances, and really focuses on those bathrooms and bathtubs, bringing them back to new. So I hope this was helpful in guiding you towards where to put your money when preparing your home for sale. I've been doing this for over 12 years, and I can tell you that the sellers that took the advice on this and did all of the items that I recommended, we had no problem selling, and the inspection reports were as minimal as possible. You know, we're always trying to check off those lists, give people less things to complain about, and then likewise, closing a lot easier. So if you have any questions there, you need any references for any of these items, I have a great one and I'm happy to give it out to you. Uh, call, text, or email with any questions. Thank you again. And I'll talk to you soon.